Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Jesse the Plan is here. Last week, we had a wonderful time with A Merry Heart Doeth Good Like a Medicine, part one. This is part two. Now, God has a wonderful sense of humor. You know how I know that? He created me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he wants to fill you with joy. And, brother, you need some joy. With, this, with the way this world's going, people don't know what to do, when to do it, where to do it, or how to do it. So it's time to just laugh away your sickness, laugh away your trouble, and just let the grace of God, the joy of the Lord, the peace of God that passed it all understanding come into your heart. Call a friend. Tell them to turn that television on. They're going to laugh till they hurt because it's funny and you're going to get healed at the same time. Watch this part two. Mary Hart doeth good like a medicine. As people take someone that may have went overbalanced or whatever, crazy with some, something, and try to throw the whole wonderful truth away. Like this laughing revival. I know, I'll tell you one thing. I don't like that laughing revival. You're all in the flesh. Well, you know, you probably was in the flesh watching it. <laughs> Don't shout me down. We've all done that. But let me give you a little prime example. I've done it myself. I, you know, we're not God's adults. We are God's children. Amen. Have you ever thought, Now I'm not saying this is happening, but have you ever thought, I submit it to you for your thinking. Have you ever thought, I've seen some people fall on the floor in uncontrollable laughter that were people of dignity that did not want to do that. Couldn't help themselves. Have you ever thought that God is doing this? Not, we're not God's adults, we're God's children. You ever thought God's going, <laughs> diggy, 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 And he might be goosing some of them. Goose, goo, 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 Yeah. How many of y'all ever tickled your children? Hold your hand up, you tickle your children. How many of you have goosed your children and they're grown up now? My daughter's grown up, but every once in a while I give her a little goose. Woo, daddy. She said, where'd you learn that from? Church. Church. Yeah, it happens. Especially Pentecostal. They've been talking to you. They say, you know, God, mm, God, mm, God's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a little goose. Yes. So we're going to baptize you. Oh, dear. Yes. Woo. Say, what's happening? The Lord going, diggy, diggy, diggy. Diggy, diggy, Why can't he do that? Aren't we his aren't we are his children, father and his family? Just a little goose. Then I got put under a new pastor. Ooh, glory to God. This guy was a radical. He looked at us, he had five guys that he he, he just soloed us out in the church, brother BB. He said, You boys love God. We went, yeah! Y'all got the fire to preach. Yeah! He said, so do I. I said, what I need a team. My God, we couldn't go anywhere without preaching. <laughs> Old brother Rafer, I don't even know if he's still living anymore. We'd go to a Denny's, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> a Denny's. And my God, he'd look around, start crying. <laughs> oh, Jesus. They're going to hell. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Now, he was 59 years old. I mean, and he'd get out, he'd lay on the floor at Denny's and cry, Jesus, save him. That's all I needed. I'd get up in that, in that, that booth and I'd go, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. That's all it took, boy. <laughs> boy, people dropping spoons and grits and eggs flying everywhere. We preach it. Get thrown out. <laughs> Five of us. We had a time. And one of them loved God. So his name was Tommy. But all he would say is, that's the truth. <laughs> he turned around and he'd go, that's the truth. And he said, okay, say something else, Jesse. <laughs> and Brother Rafer would lay on the floor. One time we stopped at the post office. He said, y'all excuse me, boys. I got to go in there and mail a letter. We was going to, we was going to go preach a youth meeting. And we waiting in the van and waiting in the van and waiting in the van. In the van, I said, where where, where Brother Rafer is? He, he said, he, and Thomas said, I don't know. He said, we better go in there and see what's going on. What's that? I mean, we waited five, you know, in a car and a running, the engine on the van. That's a long time, five minutes. And then we just wait. Finally, I said, well, I better go in there and see what he's doing. Tommy cut off the thing. He, Tommy had two other brothers. He cut them off. We all going in there. Sure, we get in it. There's Brother Rafer laying on the floor. <laughs> and the 
post office going like this. God, I mean, crying. God would touch his heart, man. He had a heart for so Jesus. These people, these people in line going, what is going on? Yes, brother, I am not exact. Brother Ray for landing the floor. When I see that, oh, I go, ha! Oh! They turn around, I go, and that's all I knew was repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Boy, there's people saying, I'm gonna mail this letter some other time, Jack. I'm out of here. <laughs> we knew just enough. Just enough to be dangerous. <laughs> but we got people saved, and they're still saved. <laughs> Man, in that post, all I said, yeah, God, that's all I knew about was hell, because God had just delivered me from hell. <laughs> I didn't know anything else but hell. That's it. I said, you're going to hell. <laughs> and Tommy would say, that's the truth. <laughs> Tommy, can't you say something else? He said, my mind goes blank. That's all I can think of. I'm not exaggerating, ladies and gentlemen. We had made up our mind. We were determined not to know anything else but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Everybody thought we was crazy, but that's all right. Our faith did not stand in the wisdom of men. God. I've been on a hunting trip with John and him. I like the way they ride horses. I've seen John coming down right when we were doing that movie uh, with Brother Copeland. Man, I mean, they're out there running them horses. Just, just, I, they said, Jesse, you want to do that? <laughs> no, I don't want to die. <laughs> oh, no. You know, because I hadn't been around horses. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I like them, but I hadn't been around them. I, I ride them as much as I possibly can, but I would just love to do that. But I would need somebody to train me because nature would destroy me. I'd have to bring Suzanne so she could kill the rabbits and, the, and feed me, praise God. I mean, every time I go on a hunt trip, I make sure I go with somebody to know what they're doing. When I was on a hunt trip, I followed John and them. They're not going to get lost because then people can see in the dark. They're like horses, man. I mean, it's dark, can't see nothing. Yeah. Hey, John, yeah, I'm over here. I'm over here, my Jesse. I just follow that sound, okay? Lord, uh, God, man. I get lost out there. I cry. <laughs> I man. They said, well, just go down this way and, and follow the mountain. I've done that and wound up on another mountain. I don't know how I, how I did that. I, I need people to help me out there. But you're not, you, you always want to be something you're not. John helped me try to kill a deer. We didn't kill him, but I tell you what, we shocked him bad. <laughs> there was bullets flying everywhere. He knew he was safe. All he had to do was not move. <laughs> Remember that, John? But John said, you're a little bit to the left. You're a little bit to the right. Whoo, you're way over him. Okay, you're under him. And that's the deer say, if I stand here, that cage and couldn't hit nothing. If I just stay here, I'll be safe. Remember that, John? God, help. No. You think I'm kidding you, Lord? We walked up to that deer, and that deer rear in. Am I telling the truth, John, about from me? John was standing, he goes, he's right there. Right, that deer... God is my wind. He had stuck his head in some brush and his rear end was hanging out. That much of his body here. And I, and I went up and I looked at him. Like, yeah. Now, what's that deer? From me to that plant, John, about something like that? John says, shoot him. <laughs> and I was just amazed. I was looking at his rear end. Oh, look at that deer. <laughs> that stupid deer is as stupid as I am. He's got his head in the bush there. Ain't nobody see me. <laughs> look at that, John. I'm not exaggerating. Am I telling the truth? John, he's going, sorry, but so stupid me. All I had to do was pick up the rifle. I probably could have goosed him, <laughs> you know? All that, and stupid me, I'm going to look through the scope. <laughs> Am I talking to John? Now, when a deer is from me to that plant, you look through the scope, all you see is hair. <laughs> I missed. Did I miss John? I miss. But John was nice. He said, Brother Jesse, we're going to go down there and see if we find any blood. <laughs> I don't doubt that deer said there was this stupid cage. <laughs> I got so close to him, he could have kissed me and still missed. But you know, John and them were so kind, they went down there looking. Now, I didn't go down there because that's too far down that hole. 
I said, man, I ain't going down there. He said, I walk down to make sure. You know, I'm pretty sure after he left me, he said, I'm just doing this because Bud Jesse, my daddy friend. <laughs> but Jesse, come up here by himself. He's going to die. We're going to have to take care of him. I missed. There's more room off of him than there is on him. I shot all around that day. But I tell you what, I don't doubt. He said, I had one of the most frightening experiences of my life. <laughs> I said that to go to this next point. John was gentle with me. I know what he was thinking. I love you, but Jesse, but keep preaching. <laughs> Don't never become Jeremiah Johnson. The next one is God is gentle. Gentleness is a social virtue. Now listen to this. It makes restraint give way to harmony. When you're gentle, it makes restraint give way to harmony. A soft answer turneth away wrath. So the other day, I, I did it. I shouldn't have did it. I went against my own flesh, Lord, my own thinking. We was at the Cheesecake Factory up in New York. And man, I like that Cheesecake Factory place. You know, I mean, if you ever eat there, you know what I'm talking about. It's a good place to eat. Well, she said, you always eat the same thing all the time. You always eat the same thing all the time. I, she didn't know, but there was a man behind her looking at me, and I looked at him, he went. Hey, he said, his wife says the same thing. So I said, okay, I'm going to try something different. Why don't you just try something different? So I did. It was trash. She said, well, I don't see why you ordered that. Oh, oh, I don't want him to talk to you, woman. I'm still mad about it. Oh, God. I should have got what I knew to get. Yeah. Then she said, she well, you shouldn't have got that. Well, excuse me. It's something new. See, Kathy gets mad at me if she eats too much pasta because it makes her fat. I'm not putting the spaghetti in her mouth. I'm buying the spaghetti. I tell you what, every time I come over here, you just make me eat pasta. Have y'all ever seen me trying to stuff pasta down my wife's throat? No. She eats it with a good heart. Then she go home and go, I tell you what, you're the antichrist, Jesse. I ain't the antichrist made me eat that pasta. You got to be kidding me. If I'd have grabbed that spoon to take that pasta out your mouth, I'd, be, I'd have one arm. I'd be preaching like this this morning. <laughs> she likes it, so eat it. I told her, I don't care. Eat it. I don't care if you gain weight on it. I don't care. I didn't marry your body. Do you understand? Do, just be happy, girl. You get fat, fine. You get skinny, fine. I don't know. You get ugly, we'll pray. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, just, just <laughs> glory to God. I don't care. I'm serious. I'm serious as I can be about that. I don't care. Now, I know I'm making some of you men mad, but I really don't care. Look, there's enough pressures in life. I ain't putting no pressures on Kathy if she gains weight or lose weight. Amen. That's her body. Do what she want with it. Amen. Just every once in a while, hey, baby, what's up? <laughs> That's all. I mean, I just do what you want to do. That, that, this is my body. I'm going to do what I want with my body. You understand? If she gets mad at me sometimes. I'm going to do it. I, I, I'm just going to do it. I don't care. <laughs> well, this is my body. One man said, well, bless God, I'm just so sick and tired of losing weight. I said, Quit trying to lose weight. You're going to lose all the weight after you're dead, so don't worry about it. You're going to get back in them 28 jeans when you're dead, so don't worry about it. Lose it all then. Who cares? That make no difference. I mean, Lord Jesus. It's tough to see people say, I bind this. I bind this food. I bind this food. Now, if you want to lose weight, don't lose something you're bound. You know how food is. It's got a voice. Food to talk to you. Who to talk to you, son? Piece of chicken will pull me out of bed at 3 o'clock in the morning. It'll do it. I hear it. And then sometimes I just hear that, love that chicken from Popeye. I'm just sleeping and I just wake up. Whoa. And the Lord said, don't eat that, Jesse. Don't eat that. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, sometimes I do it, and then the Lord lets me know I disobeyed. <laughs> Start burping, get that heart back. <laughs> Which brings me to my next point. Tyler, mess what you bind, you should never lose. Don't wrestle with flesh and blood. Come against the spirit that motivates people to do wrong things. You know, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, you won't see no flaws. I tell you, Christians got a bad habit of picking on each other. One time I went to a zoo. 
And I love monkeys. I do. I like monkeys. Man, I'm into monkeys, you know. But I found out that the zoo people don't like me because I make monkeys and baboons and gorillas mad. Because, you know, when I do watch television, I, 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 I watch the Discovery Channel. I'll give them a little plug. And, you know, I've learned, and man, it, it, it's really, it's got a lot of information on the Discovery Channel. The different things. I know everything about snakes and bugs and, and gorillas and stuff like that. And I watch the patterns and baboons and, and all kinds of stuff. And, I, and they say these certain things that the baboons do. And, 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 you know, that's their language. And I learned their language. I did. I just watch it. Oh, my God. And I thought, man, I can't wait till I get to the zoo to mess up a baboon mind. And sure enough, man, I went to the zoo, and the first place I had it for was the baboon department. I got there, there's this old male baboon just looking, and he had his sweetheart on the side of him, his mama. So I know the signs when they want to talk to each other. So I began making signs at her. And that female baboon went. And all of a sudden, that old male baboon. I mean, I had him so mad, and, but his mate, and I, what I was doing was doing those signs that they do to each other, you know? His mate loved me. <laughs> That's a true story. And I mean, that male baboon got so mad, so the zookeeper said, uh, what, what are you doing? I said, I'm talking to the woman, the woman baboon. <laughs> he said, I know that. You were How did you know that? How do you know those signs? I said, I watched the Discovery Channel. <laughs> that male baboon was mad, boy. He wanted to kill me. And one of the aggressive signs is they go, with their teeth. And I tell you what, his fangs were showing. So I said, okay, I'm sorry. He said, you're messing him up. You're causing much trouble here. So I went over to the gorilla section. <laughs> and had that big silverback. Now looking for his wife. And she's sitting up me in a tree, you know, just kind of. And I went, ooh, 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 And she looked at me. Then I gave her them signs, the gorilla signs. Born that big old silverback got up. He just looked at me and I could see, leave, fool. <laughs> he got so mad, he jumped over the trough of water and tried to climb up the wall to get to me. People ran away and I went, ha! <laughs> It's working. <laughs> then I went over to the chimpanzee side. And they're just hanging around and picking on each other. And I said, that must be the ape church. Because they're constantly picking on each other about different things. Cleaning each other up. Yet they smell just as bad after it's clean. The Bible says in Micah 7, verse 7, Therefore I will look unto the Lord. Notice this. I will wait for the God of my salvation. We could translate that to mean this. I will wait for the God of my soundness. Salvation in its true definition is soundness. My God will hear me. Verse 8. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. Or in other words, we could say, Rejoice not against me, Satan. When I fall... And everyone has fallen in here because we've all fallen short of the glory of God. I shall arise. Say that with me. I shall arise. Ladies and gentlemen, these sermon illustrations, they may be funny, but they have a great point. And each one is meant to encourage you. No matter what you've been going through, God wants you to have peace and joy. The joy of the Lord. See, that's fellowshipping with God. It keeps you full of joy. You know, it's not just praying. Look, look, look what Psalms chapter 30, verse 5 says. It's a powerful, powerful verse. Sorrow will not trap you. Isn't that good? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So in other words, something good is going to happen to you. Remember old Roberts he used to say that all the time. Something good's going to happen to you. And people would just criticize the man. Don't you want something good to happen to you? Well, sure you do. That's the joy of the Lord. Hey, here's a great question I want to answer on the program today. This is from a person named Janice. She wrote this. Jesse, Proverbs 17, 22 says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10 says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. So biblically, 
What's the difference between laughter and joy? Well, laughter is happiness and joy is the fruit of the Spirit, Janice. That's what it's all about. It's a fruit that constantly grows. And it's constantly, it's just, just giving you the fullness and the strength of God every day of your life. Where happiness is moved by emotion. You know, somebody can make you happy or make you sad. But see, the joy of the Lord is not moved, Ma, because it's, it's part of the tree. It's, it's the fruit of the Spirit, my God, and it'll minister greatly to you. To everyone who is watching this broadcast today, it's not an accident that you tuned in. No, 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 you need some help. God wants to lift you above every circumstance that you may be facing. Boy, we got a lot of different things happening in the world today. Can I pray for you? Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you, Lord, to take care of problems right now. Satan, I get great pleasure in telling you, get under these people's feet. What we bind on earth is bound in heaven. We bind you today. We don't ask. We demand you to get under these people's feet. And we decree the word of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray Amen and amen. I just like putting the devil under your feet. Never let him get any higher than your toes. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Keep him down. That's where he's supposed to be. And that's what it's all about. You know, on, the, on this broadcast, we like to share glorious moments. I love the title. The Kathy comes and tells you some wonderful testimonies that people send, in, which are glorious to God, glorious to Kathy, and glorious to me, and glorious to the people that send it. And I will tell you, it will help you. These are people saying, listen, this is what happened to me. It's not a blessing. That's why we call it glorious moments. And my God, you can remember one every day of your life. That's what it's all about. So, Kathy, take it away. Let's bless God. Let's bless the people watching and bless me, too, with some great glorious moments. giving God almighty glory. Watch this and be blessed. Hello, on today's Glorious Moments, I have four great testimonies for you. This first one is from a couple in New York. It says, I just wanted you to know what a blessing your sermons have been to me and to my husband. You have taught on subjects that we meditate on God's word about, and we are applying these principles to our everyday life. Jesse, I want you to know that you always make me laugh. The joy of the Lord is a blessing to all of us. Sharing that is even more important. I'm so glad I found your ministry. God is in control every day. Yes, he is. And this next testimony is from a couple in Ohio that had been in divorce proceedings. It says, the energy and enthusiasm of your ministry is inspiring. Your witness of God's grace and power has transformed our lives and restored our marriage of 36 years, which was in divorce proceedings. We are so grateful to be blessed by God through your ministry. Thank you. I love that. This next is a person on Facebook that sent us a wonderful testimony. It says, I always love to read something from you, and I can't watch enough of your videos. Always inspiring and renewing to listen to, no matter how many times I listen to them. Great revelation of God's word as you teach. Your teachings have made me seek the will of God in his word before praying for my heart's desires. God bless you abundantly for your shepherd teachings. I love that. This last glorious is one moment is from North Carolina, and it says, I praise the Lord for the way that you bring forth the word of God. You make it so simple, and I love the humor in your teach preaching. You're truly a blessing to me and the whole body of Christ. Keep preaching and winning souls. I love that. Hope you've been encouraged today. You know, Jess and I love spreading the gospel of Jesus to the world. Thank you, partners. Together, we are reaching people and changing lives one soul at a time. Jesse Duplantis Ministries is reaching people and changing lives one soul at a time more than ever before online. JDM is continuing to provide new faith-based content meant to strengthen your relationship with God. You can find weekly messages from Jesse and Kathy on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and more. So like us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and stay connected to all the exciting things happening at Jesse Duplantis Ministries. Ladies and gentlemen, this month, we're preaching my book, Living at the Top. I'm telling you, I've been on the bottom, and it's a lot better on the top. I mean, this... It, it, well, it will just bless you beyond your wildest dream. So many people say, I read this thing and said, I automatically felt better. And within two or three days, I could see myself rising to the top. This book would teach you how to prosper God's way, not the Babylonian way, not the world's way, God's way in every area of your life. I'm telling you, 
For ordering information, just go to our website at jdm.org. And I'm telling you what, get ready to start climbing upon the high places of your life. Partners, thank you for being so courteous and kind to us. Your faithful financial support is so greatly appreciated. You know, I've said it so many times, and I'm bragging on God. I'm not bragging on me. We have been preaching 45 years, and we've never had a financial deficit. Isn't that amazing? 45 years. Why? Because we know how to sow, and we know how to reap. And besides, I trust you. You trust me. We both trust God. It is such a blessing of the Lord to be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in and blessed going out. And all our partners, we pray that every day for you. Listen, Jesse and Kathy are blessed. You have to be exactly the same. We know better than you are by no means. My God, and this anointing of increase, and it's on me, buddy. I don't care what anybody says. It's on this boy. Well, come on you. It has to. It's God's word. Also, for your October partnership, we're offering the latest volume from my Merry Heart series, Volume 8 of A Merry Heart Doeth Good Like a Medicine. Go to jdm.org, that's our website, to get your copy. And you will be blessed beyond your wildest dreams, I'm telling you. I mean, you get healed. And I want to thank you for joining me for this week's broadcast. Don't forget to tune in next week for a special broadcast I know you'll enjoy. Kathy will be with me to share a wonderful message title. The question is, Oh, you're a real pest. It's one of our boardroom chats. It's one of them, uh, uh, people just love it so much. So we had to put it on broadcast television. Oh, you're a pest? The Bible said, I have become a pestilent fellow. Praise God. What a blessing of God. I'm telling you, you can tell I enjoy my life, right? You know why? I got the joy of the Lord in my life. <laughs> I'm living at the top. Praise God. It is a I don't care what the world says. The world's going to hell in the handbag. Jess is going to heaven in the rapture. Praise God. That's what I'm believing for. Some people say, I don't believe in that rapture. Well, you can stay here if you want. But Jess is going out on the first load. I'd like you to come with me. We're going to have a wonderful time. Man, we're going to laugh for eternity. Good Lord. Well, you don't want to miss that. Thank you, partners, for helping me. I'll give this joy to people if you'll help me to preach this gospel all over the world. Thank you for being so courteous and kind. Till next week, I love you. See ya. Bye-bye. Life is better when you never learn to doubt. In his new book, Jesse will show you how to shut doubt down. You can have more joy, more success, and full peace. I Never Learned to Doubt, now available at JDM.org. Why are you such a good Christian? Well, I'm such a good Christian. Am I? Oh, you consider me a good Christian? I consider you a good Christian. I think it's because I love Jesus. I take the time every day to spend time with Him and reading His Word, and I just keep growing. I'm, I hope that I'll continue to get better so, each day. you're a real pest. I, well, I'm a pest to the devil, that's for sure. <laughs>